Hey everybody, welcome back to another multimeter review. Hope you enjoy the show. Today we're looking at a Ultra Mini El Cheapo multimeter. It is the Anang Mini. And boy is it mini. Uh, just for comparison purposes, I'll bring in a Prova 903. And I'll actually have to zoom back. And this will give you an idea of just how small this meter is. Yeah, when I say tiny, I mean tiny. As I say, good things come in small packages. Well, let's just say that's not always the case. First impressions with this Anang is it is extremely light, um, like a feather. It doesn't feel very robust or very well made. Uh, El Cheapo plastic. And um, I think if you drop this once or twice, that's going to be it. Selector switch itself, not bad. Actually has a fairly decent rotary mechanism on it. So when you do change the settings, it does change with authority. Now how long that's gonna last, I don't know. Now when I say cheap, boy do I mean cheap. This Anang Mini retailed for around $4 Canadian. Approximately $280, $3 US. So, yeah, in terms of the cheapo multimeter reviews, this is probably one of the cheapest multimeters I've yet to review. Leads are your standard, typical cheapo leads. We'll try the pull test, and hey, it passes the pull test. Yeah, 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 it's not going anywhere, so that's good. They are sharp, I will say. They're not the um, kind of the standard Chinese style cheap lead that a lot of them ship with. Dare I say maybe it's one step up in terms of quality perhaps. Um, I mean you're limited obviously by the size of the input jacks as well. However, they do the trick. And once again I do like the fact that they are fairly pointy. So if you're probing circuits what have you, you're going to be able to get on those um, small contacts relatively easy. Now as you can see, I mean I don't have super big hands, but even these leads are pretty tiny um, compared to your standard lead. Uh, they are fairly small here. We'll just put a standard lead beside it and yeah you can see the difference there. So it is a small meat meter. I mean it'll look a little ridiculous if you had a, a lead like this that it shipped with. Kind of defeats the whole purpose. But um, the leads themselves are not bad. Don't have a whole lot of functionality with the Anang Mini. You've got your basic voltage up to 500 volts DC. You've got your ohms or resistance setting up to 2000 kilo ohms. You do have continuity with this meter, which is nice, as well as the diode setting, which we'll try out shortly. You've got your basic DC amps, 2000 microamps all the way to 2000 milliamps. You've got your 1.5 and your 9 volt battery testing indicator. You have your transistor tester, which is on board via the HFE jack right here. And as well, you've got your volts AC up to 500. So quite simple in terms of actual detail and resolution. And yeah, let's start putting this puppy to the test. Okay, so the first test will be the DC voltage test. Get things started. I've got the Proba 903 in series with the Anang Mini. And we've got our DC power supply set currently to 1.8 volts. Now this is not the most accurate DC power supply. In fact, I probably tend to believe both of the meters right now, which are reading uh, constant 1.92 volts DC. As well, I forgot to mention the Anang is 2000 count, as opposed to the 60,000 count resolution of the Prova. So you'll definitely get better resolution with the big guy. So let's moving up the voltage now. We'll take it up. And we'll go up to 5 volts. And there we are at 5 volts even. So, actually we're not at 5, we're at 4.8. So right now we're showing 4.85 for the Proba and 4.85. Hey, look at that, they're pretty well spot on. Okay, let's go up. Up higher we go 15.9 volts 16.0 for the Prova 16.0 right behind it is the Anang Mini 
Going out to a whopping 21 point. Let's make it 21.8 volts. Showing us 21.9 on the Prova. And we are over limit on the NA, but that's because it is non-auto ranging. So let's just take it up a notch. And there we go. So we're showing as spot on 21.9 for the Anning. Going further, 27 volts, 27.1 on the DC power supply, showing us 27.2 for the Prova. And you guessed it, 27.2 for the Anning. Now the DC power supply maxes out just over 30 volts, so we're maxed now at 31.8 volts. And 31.9 showing on the Prova. And look at that, 31.8 for the Anang Mini. So good job Anang. You're right up there with your big expensive brother, the Prova. And in terms of the uh, DC accuracy, I'd have to say it's pretty well spot on. Good job. Now, once again, the Anang Mini is really tiny and very light. And when I say light, this is what I mean. I mean, basically, yeah, here we go. There we are, going for a little ride, yeah. So it doesn't take much to move this little meter. Um, wish it had a little bit more heft to it. If you sit it on your car or what have you, um, good chance it might go flying. A windy day, uh, yeah, so just be warned. The other thing I'll mention, and we'll take a look at this when we open up inside as well, is that this Anning does not ship with a standard size battery. It's one of those 23A 12 volt deals. In fact, the battery cost me more than the meter. So I wasn't actually aware of this when I purchased the meter. Um, uh, the purchaser via eBay did say it took uh, one 1.5 triple-a battery however I soon found out that was not the case so the battery is your non-typical 12 volt 23a uh, size um, fairly common nowadays but once again they are expensive and this meter does not have an auto shut off so if you do your measurements and you forget to turn it off you're gonna wake up the morning and guess what yeah you got to stick another five dollar battery in there so really too bad it didn't ship with a standard triple or double a even a nine volt battery um, I just do not like the fact that it takes an expensive battery and it has no auto shut off so yeah buyer beware okay so we're gonna set it to continuity mode because if you watched any of my videos you know that I like continuity I use it a lot. So, how is it in terms of continuity? We'll soon find out. Here we go. So you can see there's a long delay. Now when it finally latches, it's quite loud. But there is a delay. Now, sometimes I'll go ahead and put my more expo expensive probe masters into these uh, El Cheapo multimeters. Uh, in this case, I can't because the probes themselves are extra small, so they don't fit. So I cannot test those with this meter. Um, anyway, there is a delay, as you can tell. Is it acceptable? Well, your mileage may vary from myself. Probably not. That being said, it is loud, so there's something positive about it. Since we're in diode mode, we might as well try testing a diode. And I believe I have one somewhere. Alrighty. Now, since we're on the um, continuity mode, I have an old, uh, well, not really old, but I do have a fuse handy. And we'll just see if it's good or bad. Ow. Cut. That's right. So this is, <clears throat> now that I've recovered from that, a, a little fuse, um, 11 amp rated, uh, comes from a UEI multimeter. Very nice UEI, which I will do a review of uh, at some point in the future. But um, yeah, so this fuse is dead. And just to demonstrate it, we'll try it here with our NA. And we are in continuity mode, and as you can see, nothing. So obviously if the fuse was good, you would be hearing that nice beep. But in this case, finito. So now I have a uh, just common set of diodes here. We'll try our diode testing since it's on the same setting. And here we go. 
have a zero reading, we'll change the leads. And there's a forward voltage drop of just over five volts. So that's good. Now, unfortunately, I was looking all over and I cannot locate my LEDs at the moment, which is too bad. I'm pretty sure, however, that this would be able to light up um, the LEDs because it does have a 12 volt battery. So we do have a lot more juice running through it. But there you go. At least you do see the uh, voltage, forward voltage drop with the, uh, with the meter. Okay, so coming up, we're going to try the HFE testing. So we will switch the dial to HFE. And we will take out, in this case, it's a very small NPN transistor. And let's see what we have. In this case, we have nothing thus far. There we are. So a little bit of prodding, but um, there we go. So our HFE is showing as about 190. Okay. Now we'll, I'll get another meter just to do a comparison. So that was 190. Okay, just for comparative purposes, I pulled up my Mastic 3900, and as you can see, we have an HFE of just over 200, around 202, compared to the 190 on the Anning. So all in all, quite close, and uh, it's always a nifty little feature to have. Coming up, we're going to take it apart, and we'll see just what's on the inside. Okay, so here's the Anning in all its naked glory. And as you can see, there's not too much to it. That's the uh, ominous 12 volt battery that I was talking about earlier. Um, at least here in Canada, these are not cheap. Um, the cheapest I found was actually via eBay for around $5. Um, local brick and mortar stores, these are running between 12 and $15 for one. So yeah, really bad choice on uh, matter batteries. Now, if we look at the PCB, we have a manufacturing date stamped and that says July um, I'm sorry, April 28th, 2017. So fairly new PCB. This is a fairly new meter. I'm quite sure it came out only a few months back. So it's uh, relatively new as far as multimeters go. In terms of the actual inputs themselves, a lot of flux here, a lot of sloppy soldering. Um, not very impressed. It doesn't uh, have really much of anything in the way of input protection. Now, of course, we're not measuring... Uh, uh, 10 amps with this, but um, really sparse. Here, I'm just going to bring it up a little bit closer for you. I hope that's in focus. Here's the uh, piezo. Now, it is a nice sounding buzzer. Um, fairly large and actually better than uh, a lot of the cheaper uh, piezos that you see on the 830 clones. Uh, capacitor, there's a cob, standard IC. Not a heck of a lot. Got a diode array down there and some resistors. Now I'm just going to pop it because there was three screws here, which I've already undone. And we'll just take it off, turn it around. Oh my lord, look at that. So yeah, pretty sparse once again. So there's the rotary dial. Um, fairly clean. No complaints there. Actually, the PCB is a lot cleaner on this side. This is the uh, HFE tester here. Um, still a lot of flux, as you can see here. Um, yeah, so pretty sparse. Pretty sparse indeed. Um, looking at the actual rotary switch itself, just your standard selector switch. That's the uh, display right there, and there's our zebra strip. That's what feeds the display. Connects with the top here. But uh, very, very basic. And once again, if we take a look at the other side, uh, yeah, there's absolutely zero shielding, which is. <laughs> Alrighty, so there we have it. So I will put things back together and come up with my final thoughts. Closing thoughts on the Anning Mini Multimeter. 
Well, I'd have to say save your money, unless you've got a lot of 12 volt batteries lying around that you really want to get rid of. Um, I wouldn't bother. Really, there's nothing special about this multimeter. It's very cheaply made, super light. Um, insides are uh, very sloppily put together. A lot of flux residue. Um, the selector switch, I can tell just after moving it around a few different times, it's um, not gonna be a very long-term or robust meter. Yeah, it's only four or five dollars, but for the same price, you can get an 830 clone, which will last pretty well forever and doesn't take 12 volt batteries and is just a lot more robust. So I would say this is kind of a unique niche product in terms of meters, but is it something you really wanna have? I would have to say no. In terms of a star rating, I'm gonna give the Anning Mini Multimeter a whopping 1.5 out of five stars. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, stay tuned for a lot more multimeter videos and giveaways coming up this summer. And as always, keep on testing.